Welcome everyone to the Fusionary Health Podcast. I have an incredible guest with me today. She is a dear friend. She is a powerful healer. She is someone who I run to when I have a, like a problem, a health issue, a struggle, or even when I just know, hey, I wanna take care of myself. I wanna detox and I wanna rejuvenate and I wanna stay on my healthy track. So welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So excited. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. So Tracy McDonough owns an incredible healing center right here in Boca Raton, Florida called Healing Moments. And it's this magical space when you walk in. I know you built it with so much intention. So it's healing just to be in your space. And then in addition, you've got so many incredible tools, which I love getting into all the tools that are available to us. So first, before we dive in, will you share a little bit about yourself and what led you to creating such a powerful space of healing? Sure. Um, lifetime of story, right? But a couple of key things. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer at a time that I was the healthiest in my life. As a matter of fact, when I found a lump on my breast and went to a doctor, he said, go home, you don't have cancer. And when I went back, he took a needle biopsy and said, go home, you're healthy, you don't have cancer. And then they did a mammogram and an ultrasound, and they all said, go home, you don't have cancer. Wow. And when I asked him to please take it out, he called me two days later and apologized to me and said, we were all wrong, but you are the epitome of health. And what people don't understand is that cancer isn't always just a physical reaction, right? Sure. Sometimes it has a lot to do with stress. In my case, it had a lot to do with heartbreak. Yeah. So I was already a massage therapist and an energy healer, and I was working with a very large elderly population. Um, a lot of them came from Europe and camps in Europe, and I could see where the stress was creating illnesses for them. I actually went back to FAU for a master's in clinical social work because I was frustrated because I wanted to do more for them. Sure. And um, what I learned from them, and then again, later on, I was in a plastic surgery center for 14 years doing a lot of lymphatic work. But what I learned from all of the people that I worked with is that you can't just work on one thing on the body. You can't just work on the physical. You just can't work on the psychological, that we are holistic beings. A lot of people actually think that our head and the rest of our body are disconnected, and they are not. No. <laughs> They're not. No. Yeah, there's so much there. So I was I had an office in one place teaching meditation and an office somewhere else doing massage. And one day I decided, you know what, we need a mind, body, spirit center yeah. where this is all inclusive. And I built a beautiful space. I always say love and compassion are my mastery and all of the things are just the tools that I use based on the person that I'm working with. Sure. And what tool resonates with them or what's right for them in that moment. Yeah. And, you know, I had an incredible practitioner on here with, she's an inter, interventional, she's a radiologist who deals with breast cancer. And she said that as well. She said, look, yes, there's a lot of cancer that's genetic or that's lifestyle based, but then there's this other type of cancer that happens purely due to something devastating happening in your life. That's just a horrible, stressful moment. Right. And I just found that so like something you can't control for. You're like, okay, well, I can't tell you if something horrific is going to happen. But what I can tell you is over time, we have this opportunity to consistently build stress resilience. And it's this topic where even when I sit down with doctors and they're like, you know, your, your blood work is showing that you're stressed. And I kind of look at them like, what would you like me to do that? How do you change your life to remove stress? All of us are going to have stress. But can you speak into a little bit, you know, I know we talk about it a lot, inflammation, um, stress, all these things are such leading drivers of disease. And what are those tools we have available for building stress resilience? Right. Oh, so many things. So many things. Right. So so that's what happens. It isn't so much a stressful event. We have an autonomic nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. We are supposed to go into fight or flight when there's a stressful event. Sure. And then we're supposed to go back into rest and repair, which is parasympathetic. Well, running away from a tiger or a bear, right? Well, now what's happened is traffic, our jobs, um, whatever you can think of in life that creates stress is now that tiger and it's an ongoing thing. So it's the consistent stress. Like even in my life, it wasn't that it was a short period of stress. There was a long period of stress. And then if you don't eat right on top of it, and then if you 
consume things that we know are not good for us on top of it, and we just don't live a healthy lifestyle on top of it, it just exponentially, you know, exaggerates. Sure. But um, a lot of what I do in my center is I deal with the nervous system, right? Because when we're in fight or flight, there's nothing happening in the body that's good. There's not even any digestion going on. Right. So it doesn't matter how healthy you eat. It doesn't matter if you're oral or organic. Yeah. It doesn't matter because if you're in fight or flight, your immune system is not working. Sure. Your digestive system is not working. Everything, all your energy is moving into your legs to run, into your arms to fight, into your brain. There's no rational thinking. It's into your brain to figure out where to hide in the moment. Sure. So there's nothing good happening in the body. And 90% of the population lives in that state. Wow. So a lot of what I do when people come in whether they're coming from a plastic surgeon for post-surgery work or whether they're coming from massage or whether they're coming for infrared sauna for detoxing. Mm. My first line of defense is, what's your nervous system like? What's going on? I think we went through that when yeah. you weren't feeling well one yeah. day, right? Yeah. You were doing all the things. And right. what did I ask you? What are you thinking about? Sure. We really have to start guarding our thoughts, right? What is it that we're thinking about? We're doing all the right things, but what's really happening inside the nervous system and inside the body when we're trying to do all the right things. Sure. And you know, I think it, let's dive into describing what that feels like. For me, when I'm stressed, like let's say I have a travel day, I am not actually in my body. I can tell like my heart's racing a little bit. I'm checked out and checked in. I've got like this fear of forgetting something in the luggage that I need to go to the place. Like there's a lot of factors in the brain or if work is crazy and you're like, oh my gosh, but there's so many apples and they're all just like dropping or plates are dropping is how I see it. Like, did I forget to pay that bill? Did I forget to do this thing? So it's almost like you're, you're, you're moving through life physically, but your mental brain is in a completely different place. And then emotionally you could be dealing with five other factors on top of it. And so you're right. Like if we're not mind, body, spirit integrated, which in Ayurveda we teach, like health is mind, body, spirit. Right then we're constantly in this like checked out fight or flight, trying to deal with too many things mode. And it's interesting. I came into your office the other day and I said something like, yeah, you know, with my blood work, it just says I'm pre-diabetic. And you were like, no, you're not. Take that word out of your mindset. And it's such a powerful thing you do. You always remind, like, don't attach labels to self. Don't take words and bring them into yourself. Yeah, my diabetes, my cancer, yeah. my this. Don't own that. Those are things that are temporary. They have a message for you. They're telling you that something is not in balance in your body. Take the message, do the thing, right. and move on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, don't take, don't take those things on into yourself. So can you talk a little bit about how diseases or conditions start? Like a lot of times people think, oh, I created that. I'm one of those people who I, I always assume that the consequence comes from my actions. And it's such a linear way of thinking sometimes. And there's many other ways to think. There's many other mindsets and, and ways of thinking, like I said. Um, so will you share a little bit? Because I know that we, as, as women and as people who are in this work, like to have all those other conversations around health. Like yeah. it's our auric field. It's, it's something we're bringing into our energy space first and then it's coming deeper. Right. So that's how we really manifest, right? It happens in the field first. It happens in our energy. When they say stress kills, it's not a physical thing. It's an energy, right? So energy, psychological, emotional, physical, right? That's mm -hmm. how we manifest. And there's a lot of factors. So people say, oh, well, it's genetic. You know, my family had it. I'm going to have it. Genes do not have to be dis expressed. Genes sure. can be turned on and turned off. We don't have to have the same fate. Um, what are the things that factor in? Yes, relationships, right? How we deal in our relationships, right. what we do for work. A lot of people are in jobs that they hate. They're miserable. That matters. Your body feels everything you think and say. So self-talk is a big deal. And that's one of the things you were just talking about when people talk to me. Like you really have to guard what it is you're saying to yourself. You give yourself some grace. We we would never treat our friends the way we treat ourselves sometimes. Absolutely not. Right? So energetically, we're, look, we're on toxic overload. We're exposed to toxins in our food, toxins in our water, toxins in the air, electromagnetic fields. All of those things contribute. We only have control over so many things. Sure. But we have control over a lot more than we think. And unfortunately, we're a lazy nation. A lot of people either don't know, don't want to know, don't understand, even if they're trying to know, 
And people like us are the people that they look to for help. And I just, you know, I just love when people walk in my door, they say, I just feel like someone has brought me in for a big hug. And when someone comes in and they get into that place, now they're open to learning. They're willing to learn. Yeah, sometimes they learn and leave and go back to the same old thing. And then sometime later, I'll see them again. So I always say, I'm just dripping on people. Sure. And if I can just make a little bit of a difference, you know, and just, just sometimes being there and having compassion for people wherever they are, there's never any judgment from me. Sure. There's just education, right? Right. And someone to give them a hug once in a while because, you know, even during COVID, like I saw moms that were working moms and now they were teachers and their kids were home all the time. I never saw so much stress. And yeah. unfortunately what, what I've seen over the last couple of years is my practice has actually went from like 90% post-surgery work to 90% stress, anxiety, depression, and physical ailments. Hmm. You know, it's interesting. What you made me think of is in COVID, a lot of us got stuck in a gear. Yeah. It's almost like a car and and I can see how that happened to me too during that time. I was a working mom. I had an amazing company. I stayed a working mom, but I literally had to put my company into remission because the kids had to go through school and I was the new homeschool teacher and I had to manage this. And, and it was just such a stressful time yeah, of job. uncertainty. And so all of a sudden now I can catch it. I can notice in my body where I'm like, you know, you are dysregulated. Yeah. You need to go see your practitioners. You need to do radical self-care. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, I just met someone on a plane this week. They were in their homes for two years. They didn't go to a public place. They lived in California and Sonoma. And I was so shocked. I was like, we, by May in Florida, everything was open. Yeah. You know, so we've all had these different experiences. A lot yeah. of fear got planted and a lot of stress. So I'm sure that's why you're seeing so much more anxiety, depression, you know, even in the kid populations, the children who were kind of, I wouldn't say locked up, but like kept inside and, and yeah. didn't get to go to school and socialize at the same level. Yeah. So it's like, how do we unravel? Yeah. How do we Let's unwind? Mm -hmm. Let's take that iPhone or whatever you want to call it, cable mess that we have with our headphones all the time and just start to unwind all those threads and bring it back to kind of clear pathways. Yeah. Well, that's learning how to relax. Yeah. Right, which is so foreign to so many people. It's true. I don't have time. You yeah. know, I have too many things. You know, even, look, even myself, like right now. So I get nervous speaking, and I can feel my lower body just like tensing up, right? Sure. My belly. I can actually feel myself up off the seat. Yeah. And, you know, that comes from my own, like, stuff, and I sure. just do a lot of untethering. The first thing is the awareness. I have that awareness now. In the past, I didn't even notice I was doing that, but sure. I would have a backache by the end of the day. Sure. So now I have this awareness, and while um, it's happening, I go, okay, breathe. Yeah, just breathe. take a deep breath. Breathe, just relax into it. Yeah. You know, so awareness is the first thing. So many people aren't even aware. Like, they know they're stressed, but they don't really know what that means. Sure. You know, they get migraines, and the migraines are because of something else. And, sure. you know, they don't even know it's because they're in stress mode and their body's not digesting. So of course, you know, they have gut issues, which is going to create migraines in the head or tension in the neck. Sure. So it's really the awareness. The awareness yeah. comes first because once the awareness comes, then you know you need to get help if you can't deal with it on your own. Yeah. I think meditation is the number one thing everyone in the world should do. Sure. Every day because it brings you back into your own body, right? Sure. Um, I love to teach people meditation that tell me they can't meditate. I love to teach kids meditation. Nice. I, I, I have them lay on the grounds and watch the clouds. And then I go, okay, don't look at the clouds. Look at the sky and let the clouds go by. Because that's what meditation is, right? It's about focusing on nothing right. and letting all the things go by. Right. Not that you stop your mind from thinking. You would never tell your lungs to stop breathing. It's about not engaging just for a short period of time. It sure. can be 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be two hours of sitting there with your eyes closed. And, right. You know, the best meditations really are when you're walking and you're able to just take in nature, right? you know, walking and notice the tree. Yeah. I, years ago, I remember driving down the street in my neighborhood 
And I was starting to do that, right? I was starting to make myself present, like notice things. And there are two giant trees in my neighborhood I have never seen. They literally tower over the neighborhood. They are literally like <laughs> Christmas tree size yeah. over the neighborhood. Yeah. And I was like, I never even noticed those before. Right. Because we're so mindless. And how many times have you driven somewhere sure. and you don't even remember getting there? Totally. Totally. So I love that tool. It's an easy one for the person listening today to take home and say, look, you know, sometimes even I myself don't make time to meditate in the morning. And I laugh at myself. I'm like, really? You can't give yourself five minutes today, Shivani. You know, you need it. You know, you need to center yourself before you start your day. But sometimes I'm just running late through my morning and it happens a lot right now. And, um, it's one of those things where instead I prefer the practice of walking and moving and choosing to be present. It's easier to me. So in the pandemic, when I thought, okay, I don't know how to control what's going to happen, but one thing I can control is how we experience this time. And so we've set in, I set in the habit of us walking every night with the kids at the park. And they can tell you, mommy made us go to the park every day for an hour. And I would just walk huge circles. And I just, I can describe, I could sketch to you every plant that exists. Nice. Then I walk the streets around it. I, I, I love when you get to that point where like the green of nature is exploding at you and you're just in wonder at how nature could do all these different varieties of things so beautifully, Yeah, you know? And if you really focus on a a plant or a leaf, you can actually see the energy coming off of it, the photons and the energy coming off of it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They're alive. True. That's one of my favorite things to do. I know people talk about this and they laugh and they think it's a joke, but it's really very good for us is to go out in the grass and hug a tree. Sure. Why? Because we have all these little cells in our body that are full batteries when we're born and we do nothing to charge those batteries. And as we age, the batteries get depleted, right? And going out into nature and putting your feet in the grass and hugging a tree because there's so much energy that comes off of trees. It's actually, it's like plugging in your cell phone. Wow. Simple, powerful, Mm -hmm. but most of us would feel too weird to do that. (laughs) Well, it's in my backyard. So (laughs) So we have to go find a tree that's like a little knot right in the middle of the park. I do see a tree every once in a while. I'm like, oh, there's too much soccer happening. Everyone's going to think I'm a crazy girl. But many times I just take my shoes off and I do my walk in the park barefoot. And I'm like, if anyone knows anything about health, they would know that this is on purpose for my whole system to recharge. Yes, I do Dr. Joe's meditation, Mark, and the ends of the walking meditations, he's, he makes us lay down wow. on the earth, wherever we are. Sure. Yeah. Will you talk about Dr. Joe Dispenza a bit? Because he is someone who so many people admire, and I have not gone to his program yet, but so many of my close friends and family have. So will you just describe a little of that philosophy and work? Because I feel like it's so much a part of, of you and what you do. Um, okay. I do a lot of his work. I've, I've been to several of his events. I don't know if I'm an expert to talk about his work, but um, basically he says we are responsible for our own self and the energy that we keep in our body is the energy that keeps us not well, right? Mm -hmm. That we're attached to things and events and emotions and it's all trapped in the body. And when you can do meditation intentionally with a specific breath, Mm -hmm. you can actually start to release all of that. And when you become so present in your body and to the point where you don't even worry about the things that are the the illnesses you might be holding on to because you just feel so good and so present that sometimes those are the things that help those things dissipate and go away. Amazing. Because we just hold on to so much. Sure. And when you're able to really breathe and re-regulate the brain waves and Mm -hmm. re-regulate the energy in the body, the the body knows what to do. Sure. It knows how to heal itself. It does. And we we, just interfere. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. We get in the way. Mm -hmm. So will you share with us some of the tools in your space? Because I'm a big believer in we have the opportunity to build our health. We can build rituals and habits throughout our day that are so supportive of our health, meditating in the morning, Mm -hmm. what we eat, how we consume it, how much we ground ourselves in nature, all these things. So we have an opportunity to build the rhythm. And what's cool is modern day times right now, there's this term called biohacking, where you take tools that have been created to help support you get to the level of health you want or maintain the level of health you want. So I've been going to biohacking conferences and it's funny because after I came back, you and I laughed and you said, you know, I've had biohacking tools for over 20 years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, We've been biohacking. My husband was taking vitamins 40, 50 years ago when people didn't really, you know, 
Sure. Even know what vitamins were. <laughs> yeah. I remember my dad would sit me down. I was in elementary school, so it was about 35 years ago, 30 years ago. And he'd sit down and be like, okay, what are your problems? You need vitamin A for that one. Okay. You need vitamin C. And he'd pick stuff out and, and he bought these tools. I remember from my grandparents to heal them, the power plate and all these kinds of tools, they existed. They were just really not known at the time. So will you share some of your tools? Because as someone who is out there and working and trying to make an impact and a mom and, and always on like my journey to the things I want to build, I oftentimes have to come in and really use these tools to get myself out of my own fight or flight mode. Yeah. And it's funny because just sitting across from me, I'm like, oh, I chose infrared last week. It's not really what I needed. Yeah. What I needed was that vibroacoustic healing bed. I needed yeah. someone to help me hit the reset button yes. for myself. Yeah. And then I'm good for a little while until I cause it again. So will you share some of those tools? Cause I love Beamer. I love the Kangen water that you use. Vibroacoustic healing is like a modality probably 99% of people don't know, but it's so powerful. Infrared sauna. And then I'm sure you have many more that I don't even use yet. Yeah. yeah. So my place is called Healing Moments, right? So when you walk in the door, that's what we're doing. We're helping you create your own healing moments. So we start with ionized, charged, high um, ORP value water. That's a big deal for me, right? Taking in healthy water. And um, there's frankincense in the paint, so it creates a high frequency space, right? Essential oils are from plants and they have very high frequencies. Um, I do massage and lymphatic work because our lymphatic system is our sewer system, right? And we need to keep it clear in order to, for our body to be healthy. But one of my favorite modalities is fibroacoustic therapy. Again, going back to the nervous system, my my primary focus when people come in is calming the nervous system. You can't come in and just have a massage and leave. It's not what I do. You get on the table. By the time you relax, it's over. You get in the parking lot, somebody cuts you off. Your nervous system is back up there, right? So I like to calm the nervous system and then prepare the body to receive whatever the service is that you're going to have. But the awesome. vibroacoustic therapy sound lounge, I have an in-harmony sound lounge, is amazing. Because vibroacoustic therapy literally resets the nervous system. You are listening to frequencies in music that were created for a specific purpose. Pain and stress, grief, trauma, inspiration, abundance, whatever it is, right? So Healing the chakras. Exactly. Yeah. And there are thousands of frequencies. We know people listen to frequency music all the time at home True. through YouTube and all Binaural of that. Binaural beats and all these Binaural things. So if you're beats, into that, that, this is actually an integration of it into your ears with vibration underneath you. Will you explain that? Right. So your brain hears it as music, right? The frequencies are in the music, but you're laying on a table that actually picks up the frequency and starts to vibrate at the same frequency. It's got transducers. You basically become the speaker. <laughs> so it creates resonance, right? Resonance between the brain and the body. There starts to be coherence between the brain and the heart and connection. And it takes about 15 minutes and it kind of bypasses your nervous system and it just releases a bunch of chemicals that take you right down into a beautiful low alpha brainwave state, which is our calming brainwave state, right? We're usually up in this beta brainwave state, sometimes yeah. more stress, right? <laughs> but it's, I have never had one person get off of that and say, oh, that, that was really not very good. I didn't like it. Everybody comes off and they go, wow, that was amazing. I have a, a, a pharmacist right now. I love talking to her because she's a pharmacist, right? And when I started to tell her that this would be great for her conditions, including heartburn, she was like, and after two or three sessions, because, you know, heart, a lot of times heartburn is stress related. It wasn't, sure. it, that was her problem. Yeah. And, uh, and she just keeps saying, I can't believe it. Right. Right. She's doing a protocol. She's doing at least twice a week sure. for six weeks, right? Okay. That's at least that. Yeah. Because it's cumulative. Every time you lay on it, your nervous system starts to re mm. recognize and go, oh, I know. This is the time that I can start to relax. Right. And um, yeah, so people get off of there and they're just like, that's like the most powerful thing I've ever done before. Yeah, I love that statement. I mean, imagine if we could do something, you can call it homework or you can call it therapy. It's kind of like going to the gym, right? When you go to the gym, you're going to build muscle every time. You're going to get stronger. You're going to have more endurance. You're going to have more fitness. Yeah. In the same way, if we could invest 30 minutes, 45 minutes in using a tool that you go in once 
Second time your system's like, oh, I did this before. I know this is my healing time. Three, I'm going to go heal all the things that need to be heal, healed. I'm going to show my nervous system how to regulate. It's almost like a staircase towards getting back to your original resonance yes. where your body wants to stay healthy and happy, where your body is in rest and digest and repair and heal mode so that you can hold that better. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll do a session on that before a massage. Sure. Because now their body is ready to receive body work and sure. energy work and they're in it with me. So the one thing, the one conversation I have with people is you have to be in it with me. Sure. You are laying on my table and I am sending frequencies to you. I'm healing Shivani. I, of course, I'm not doing the healing, sure. right? But I'm sending those frequencies and in my mind, what am I thinking? healing for you. Sure. You have to be thinking healing for you too. You can't be laying there thinking about work and sure. all the things that you're not doing or what time is it or my phone's ringing. Sure. You know, it's really about really being present and experiencing whatever the thing is. I have other modalities. Sure. For sauna is powerful and it's excellent for relaxation yeah. if you can relax in a sauna, right? Sure. It's got mid waves for relaxing muscles and for heart health. It's got near waves for anti-aging and cell regenerating. And then it's got far waves, which are actually opening your fat cells and moving through your organs and detoxing your body. Sure. And depending on how toxic you are, for some people, everybody feels good when they come out of there. Sure. But, you know, there's like levels, right? Yes. There's levels to that. Yeah. Sometimes I stay in too long. And I'm like, you know, you had a line and you just crossed the line. <laughs> it just feels so good. And yeah. so it, it really is relaxing. There are people that have issues with heat. Mm -hmm. I think more, it's more like in their mind because it's dry heat. It's not the same. But still, sure. some people worry that, it, you know, it's too small of a space, you know. But most people really do love it. It's just a matter of knowing what it is that you need in the moment. If you have a big meeting to go to yeah. and you're sitting there and you're sweating and you're thinking, I have a big meeting to go to, sure. that's not really calming, right? Totally. <laughs> yeah. And let's talk about infrared saunas for just a moment mm -hmm. because you just mentioned the three waves, far, mm -hmm. mid, near, and near. Near, mid, and far. So that's full spectrum infrared. And I know you bought a new one in the last year just because you were like, look, I wanted to make sure I'm giving people the best of the best. And you added a red light in there. Yeah, there's a red light tower. So so we are, are pho biophotonic beings, right? We are light beings and we need light. That's why red light is blown up because we need light sure. in our body and our bodies respond really well to light, the energy from light. There's near infrared in that tower as well, which mm -hmm. is really great for the skin. Nice. Um, yeah, uh, the reason I got a new sauna was because um, there's a lot of EMFs that come off of saunas mm -hmm. or Vox, you know, the um, fumes and things that come off of the wood. So you just really have to be mindful about sure. if you're going to get a sauna, what brand it is and, and what their, you know, uh, statistics are and all of that. Sure. And that's why I love coming to you. I feel like you've been in this sector for a while. And you've watched, years. Yeah, you've watched some things come and go. And so, you know, I, one day want to build my own little biohacking room, but I'm one of those funny people where if I own a device, I won't use it. But if I go to your center, I'll be consistent. So it's, it's a funny thing. I will not buy an infrared sauna because I know it'll just sit there and rot in my house. Mm -hmm. um, but I love coming to you because you know, like which one to get. So I always send people to you because I'm like, she will know the best way to detox. She will know the best tools to buy if, if that's where you want to go. Yeah. And I sell a lot of the things that I have. This is the thing about, and this is the challenge in holistic wellness, right? Is that all of these, they're just different roads to the same pathway, which is putting the body in a position to do what it wants to do, which is heal itself. But it isn't a once a day, you know, once a, a every once in a while thing, right? No. Now you are doing other things, sure. but there are people that are doing nothing. And then they come in for a sound bed session and they feel amazing. And then I don't see them again for a month and they'll do another one. Sure. It's not enough. It's not that them in that moment, it's very good for them in that moment. But on a long-term basis, we need to start taking better care of our bodies. Yeah. You know, I, I have um, ionic foot baths there. I have Beamer therapy, which is excellent for circulation, right? Sure. Circulation is what we need in our body as we age our microcirculatory system breaks down mm. a lot and it pushes about 74% of our blood flow. Wow. So, so neuropathy, joint sinos, pain, arthritis, stiffness, yeah, we lose our eyesight. We need readers by the time we're 45. Sure. All of that. Even brain, keeping that brain Losing going. Losing our hair. Yeah. You know, people That's circulation. Hair. Yeah. 
sexual for a health. lot of people. It's oh, sexual nice. health. Totally. Yes. I only think of that because turmeric increases blood flow. And so there's yeah. all these conversations people are having of like libido and they want to stay healthy. And that's part of being vibrant. Right. And I'm like, well, blood flow and circulation is super important. Yeah. And so hydration and blood flow are the key yeah. parts of this, right? Totally. And Beamer, you could just lay on it. Mm-hmm. It's not hard. Yeah. I love tools where it's like, okay, my homework is to just lay here and read a book. Okay. Or just chill, zone out, meditate. Like, yeah. thank you. I love, yeah. I love a two for one. Yeah. <laughs> and also the lymphatic system. system. So it's creating circulation yeah. in the body, which is also helping to move the lymphatic system. Again, sure. our sewer system. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I just... I bought all of these tools for me. Sure. Everything I buy, I buy for me. I try it before I decide to share it. Sure. But everything there I bought for me, and I'm just sharing it with my clients because yeah. I know how good it is, and I know how good it makes me feel. Absolutely. I have another device called Cell Vital, which is also another PMF device, which is also fabulous. And one of their patents is that it helps to um, detox you from radiation. Wow. Yeah, so like That's really huge. cool So things. pilots, people who've worked in the airline industry probably even doctors, yeah, really you know, cool, right? Yeah, it is very cool. Cause a lot of people are exposed to things at a higher level than others. And I think about that a lot. I'm like, what is the punishment of doing the job you do? Are you investing in the tool you need at a young enough age? So you don't pay a price that's really horrible later. So for example, in Fusionary, when I'm out there meeting doctors, a lot of chiropractors I find were college athletes. And then they got so beat up in their sport. Only yeah. a chiropractor saved them. Yeah. Then they went to chiropractor school and now they're a chiropractor. Yeah. But they're still quite beaten up. They're like, does your turmeric really work? I'm like, yes, it does. And they're like, okay. Because they're constantly seeking what you're talking about is the tools to to hold their health at least where they're at, if not reverse. Yeah. That's how I became a, a Reiki practitioner and a massage therapist. I got hit by a man who had a heart attack on the turnpike, hit me head on doing 80 miles an hour, shattered every bone in my foot. Oh my my heel bone is a cadaver bone. And I was in a cast for months. And the first few weeks I had to lay on a couch and not move at all except to go to the bathroom. Wow. And you can imagine what that made my back feel. I was in the nightclub business. I used to manage nightclubs and bartend. I wow. wasn't in this business at all, but I had friends that were Reiki healers and they were working on me daily. And my doctors were like, I don't understand why you're progressing so fast. And then sure. I had a massage therapist come because my back from laying on the couch. Yeah. I actually went to massage school while I was still in a boot. Wow. Like I did a lot of the uh, the classwork. Sure. And and that's what brought me into this. You know, the universe sends messages, and they're usually small, but if you don't pay attention, they get bigger, and apparently I was not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> my mother said when I was two years old, in New York City, I would climb up on benches and walk up to people that were sitting on the bench and put my hands on the side of their head yeah. and put my forehead on their forehead and close my eyes. Wow. And she said, you would stay there for the longest time for a two-year-old. You yeah. can tell how long ago this was, right? Nobody would do this now. Yeah. But um, she said, you'd open your eyes right in their face and go, do you feel better? Yeah. So apparently when I was two, I was yes. told I should be a healer and at least facilitate healing, but yeah. what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Isn't it funny, the messages and the traits we have that we don't honor mm-hmm. and we don't listen to until much, much later. Yeah. And sometimes some of us can hear them calling within us and we're still not listening. Right. And it's right. it's a funny thing to watch. If At least if you have this awareness that you're talking about, which is it's there. And are you going to listen? At least write about it is kind of the message I get sometimes. Journaling like, is great. Yeah. yeah. Journaling is great for everyone because it brings you to the present, right? How many times have I said to a client, sit down for me and just journal for a minute. Tell me how you're feeling. There's nothing in the paper. Sure. And I was like, why aren't you writing anything? They're like, I just don't know what to write. I can't think of anything. Mm. They they are so erratic that they can't even be present enough to explain what that is. Sure. You know, is what is that? Is it nervous? Is it angry? Is it sad? They don't even like it really takes a little bit of probing to get them to and sure. to get them to be able to write anything at all. Sure. And in Ayurveda we call that like a vata type of person. You know, and I when I encounter them, I'm much more of a grounded and fire person. So I'm always like, how can you not know how to recenter? But many people in this day and age, it's hard. Right. You can't blame anyone because it's like society is creating us to be these frenetic, frantic beings. Yes. And on top of it, physically, it's almost like the body's under assault from yes. all the external factors. Yes. And I think about that a lot as a mom. 
I'm like, how do I control the factors that are going to contribute to disease if I don't control them? Right. Um, and so I feel like you're always a wealth of knowledge when it comes to anything around oh. how to live this cleaner, healthier lifestyle, even within our homes. Yeah. Because you've dealt with so many patients who've been sick, who have done, you know, plastic surgery, but a lot of explant surgery. Yeah. So Mastectomy, really, reconstruction. Yeah. 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 And so it's really about how do you build this lifestyle inside of your life and have a center nearby, both to support that. Yeah. Yeah. So can and you tell that's us? That's what I love to do is yeah. educate people on what they can do at home. Sure. Yeah. Because that's the maintenance plan of the work. So will you share any special stories or any specific clients or any specific examples that you can think of where, like you said, the pharmacist, anything like that? Because it kind of brings home what the tools do. Um, I had a mom a few years ago and uh, she had three kids. So, so my, my favorite client, if you could say it that way, mm -hmm. is the mom who has put her children and her family first and now is in her like 40s and 50s and really falling apart. That's my favorite client because they're not really sick yet, yeah. but they could be. Sure. And um, I had one who had three beautiful kids, and she was just the most amazing mom, but yeah. gave herself no grace at all. Yeah. And she stayed with me for a few months, which is nice when people can actually come in on a, on a you know a weekly or a biweekly. Yeah. And um, the end of about three or four months, she just turned around one day and she just said to me, "You have changed not only my life but yeah. my children's life." Sure. Because remember, you. You, t as a mom, you're teaching your daughter how to take care of herself. Sure. Right? You're teaching her how to respond to life and how to act with her children and with her husband. Like you're, And so she, she just made me feel so good. She just hugged yeah. me and she said, you did not only change my life, and I feel so much more grounded and healthy, but you've changed my children's life because totally. I've taught them all the things that you teach me. Oh, my God. And that is just... That's I also, amazing. I had another woman who... Um, came to me for a massage. She was elderly and very angry. Hmm. And typically when someone comes in and they're really not nice to me, I can't, it's hard to love someone, yeah. but that's when they need it the most, right? Sure. So I kind of put it aside. I, yeah. I gave her a massage. She kind of relaxed. She started to come. And the same thing, three months later, she said to me, you saved my life. She said, my husband has been in a wheelchair and is a paraplegic. And oh. I was dealing with uterine cancer. I had just wow. come off of all my treatments when I came to see you, God. which I didn't know, but I knew that she needed something, right? Yeah. And she said, and how you've treated me over the last few months, you literally saved my life. I, I'm a different person now. Wow. And I appreciate you so much. You are like one of the number one people in my life that I will always love and talk about. Which, yeah. You know, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for accolades, but it makes me feel so good. Yeah. When, and I have so many people that come in, so many oh. people, you know, people with cancer that, you know, I don't ever, um, I don't have judgment on people, whether they do treatment or they don't. Sure. I'm there to do the supportive care for them right. and to coach them through whatever it is they're doing by keeping their spirits and their yeah. energy and their emotions in check, right? Because you sure. could be doing all the treatments, but if you're angry and scared and sad and all of that, right. It's not going to work for you. I had a woman that we went through breast cancer. She did her radiation. She did her chemo. She came to me a lot. We did a lot of energy work, a lot of talk therapy, a lot of meditation. And then she walked in one day and she said, I'm taking this little pill every day. I know it's poison, but I have to take it for five years. Wow. And I said, there's no world where you take poison every day and live a long, healthy life. Correct. So you either have to bless that little pill yes. every day and be very certain that it's helping you heal Correct. or you have to not take it. You can't have it both ways. Correct. So that was a, a light bulb moment for her. Yeah. And those are the moments that I live for. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It could sure. be something so tiny. And, and she made her decision to do whatever she decided to do, but she understood sure. making the decision. And, and living in the decision. I have that with people with relationships, right? Sure. They want to be in a relationship, but they know it's not good, but they're going to try one more time. And sure. my message is, if you're going to try one more time, mm. you have to be in it. You have to be in it. You can't hold on to all the past things. Sure. 
and bring it into now with you, right? Correct. You really have to decide, this is the path I'm choosing and all the other stuff has to go away in order for me to be successful or I have to choose a different path. Sure. And I think about that a lot is, are we poisoning ourselves because we are cursing something as we are sending it down? Yes. And so it's, it's such a powerful and profound thought. If I, and I do this too. So I, I have learned this and I've, I've learned this from you as well. Sometimes I use Western medicine tools, but I can't curse them as I use them just because I don't want to use them. If I'm reaching for the tool, use the tool, but bless the tool and acknowledge that it's there to help you and support you. If I'm dying of a headache and I have tried my 18 ways to get rid of the headache and I have a dinner to go to and my job is to sit there and smile and look pretty, I will take a Tylenol. I've done it like I do it three times a year maybe. And each time I'm like, dang it, I didn't win. Now I have to take this stupid thing and I hate this stupid. And then I'm like, no, 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 stop. You have done your level best. Right. You have somewhere to go. Take the pill, right. say thank you that the pill exists right. and keep moving. Yeah. And what did, it, maybe you don't work out so hard that next time or don't overdo it right. for that day. Know what to, know how to manage self. But don't poison things on the way in. I think about that with food now. Sometimes I'm out and about. I was just in Idaho this week and it's all about the potatoes. So I had the French fries and the potatoes and I was like, I'm going to eat like a thousand pounds of calories and potatoes are sugar and (laughs) that's a lot of, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat this meal with such joy and I don't eat French fries all year. It's fine. So it's just that reminder of don't poison something on its way into you. Honor you enjoy the thing Mm -hmm. and move forward with love. This is the hard drive to the body. Okay. We can create health or we can create sickness just with this. Sure. This is really in charge, right? I I think I heard Deepak Chopra say like 40 years ago, it isn't so much the things we do. It's how we feel about the things we do, right? So you're eating pizza And instead of loving that pizza and going, oh, I don't do this too often and I'm just going to enjoy this and thank you for being here because you're so yummy. Totally. But if you're eating the pizza going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm poisoning myself with this garbage and la, 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 you're really doing a big disservice, right? You're not only are you not eating the healthiest food, but now you are not eating the healthiest thoughts and energy, energy that you're sending to your body is just so dysregulated. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And it's such a big thing. I think the word dysregulated is coming to the surface a little bit more. I'm seeing it more online. I think maybe it's the younger generation who's understanding I'm regulated or I'm dysregulated and they're able to tune into it. And I think if we can give words to it, maybe people can understand like, Hey, I'm not, I'm dysregulated. What am I going to do to fix that right now? So for me, everyone knows I'm obsessed with tea and I build tea time as me time into my day right. as an anchor. Mm-hmm. It's a check-in point. Right. How are you? That's the first question I ask myself when I drink my tea. How are you? Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Are you, and, and ask yourself for real, are you okay? And your own intuition will give you an answer yes. and then you get to move from there. Yes. You, have, yeah. you can ask anything and if you really listen, you'll get the answer. Right. Right. And those warning signals can be really indicative of changes we need to make. Yeah. Um, in 2020, I built my six week program called Fusionary Method. And I dove into how to give people all these Ayurvedic tools because as the owner of Fusionary Formulas, everyone started taking my turmeric pill as a pill for a problem. And I got really frustrated. I was like, that's not why I created a turmeric pill. I created it because turmeric is an anti-inflammatory that will support the body at the base. And then we will put the body into a healing state. That's what I believe turmeric does. And when I created Method, I realized quickly people needed to detox. And so it's so funny. I built a 21-day detox into Method. I was detoxing everyone. And I was like, listen, ladies, I know how to detox you the Ayurvedic way, but I don't own an Ayurvedic detox center. For all the rest of the tools, you have to go to Tracy. Uh Because you have the tools right there. You have the infrared sauna. You have these tools that will put the body into such a powerful healing state that a detox will be 5, 10, 50, 100 times more effective. Yeah. And I find that to be so awesome that we have this tool available to us locally. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I love having it. Yeah, and then another thing I wanted to share, and I know we could talk all day on these mm-hmm. topics. Yeah. Um, I had a fibroid at one point that grew to 10 centimeters. Recently, I have a friend who called me. She showed me her MRI. It was even bigger. And 
when I came to you, I said, look, I don't know why I created this. I don't know why my body created this. I don't know why it's here. Um, and you know me, I'm pretty anti-surgery. And so I went through every single door I could to try to reverse the thing. And I'll just never forget, we had a session. It was a Reiki session together, lymphatic session. And you kind of tuned into me and you said, look, this is orange. This is your sacral chakra. And the chakras will give you messages. So will you share a little bit about that? Because when my friend went through it just now, I was like, you need to go see Tracy. <laughs> this could be your creative seat in your body and you're not hitting publish. And it completely resonated with her. And so a lot of time with women and our women's health, and there's so many issues with women right now with the endometriosis and the fibroids and the PCOS and infertility and menopause. Like I'm seeing every woman like just trying to understand what the heck we should be doing. Will you speak a little into that? Yeah. Well, much of that is toxins and nervous system, right? Sure. But we have energy centers in the body. And every energy center correlates with certain organs in the body and certain emotions that go with it. Sure. So I always talk about when I had breast cancer, right? The heart energy center governs the breast, the heart, the lungs, right? And so why do so many women get breast cancer? Sure. Right? Because we are heart-centered yeah. beings, right? Sacral chakra as well. Um, that is our, that's where our masculine and feminine energy live, right? Mm. And there's so much imbalance in that in this world today. Why? Because relationships break up. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of self-esteem issues. There's so much trauma. So there's always an imbalance. People come into me all the time and it'll be like, oh, I have this pain on the right side. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm, you know, I'm a head of a big organization and I have all this work to do. And what's happening is my kids and my family and my home right. are not getting as much attention. So that's the feminine side, right? The masculine side is the person that's in charge. The feminine side is the graceful one, the, the mom, the nurturer, right? And right. there's a lot of imbalance for women there sure. because there are so Absolutely. many women that are out in the world having to take charge or even taking charge in their home. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of times I'll see a lot of that in those situations. Yeah. As far as surgery goes, sometimes um, we just wait too long yeah. or we are too sick. Or we just, the body's in such distress yeah. that you need a Tylenol. Sure. You know? And sometimes you just need surgery and then you can go back to building balance. Sure. Like I wanted this lump out of my breast. Yeah. I knew I could heal it. I knew, I knew all of that. I went from you don't have cancer to you need a lumpectomy, you need radiation, you need chemo, you need tamoxifen, you need all the things. I didn't sure. need all the things. I needed you to take it out. Yeah. I did do a little radiation at the time because I didn't know better, and maybe I still would have if even if I did, but I didn't do all the other things. Sure. And uh, sometimes surgery is necessary. Sometimes Tylenol is necessary. Yeah. But what's really necessary is to understand how our lives really affect our body. Our body is not disconnected from the events in your home yeah. or the relationships that you have or the stress from your job. Yeah. Our body takes a hit every single time. This is the only home we ever really own. And uh, yeah, so the sacral chakra gets a lot of hits in women's in women's health, and a lot of it has to do with how they have to manage life. Sure, heart the same thing. Um, I had a woman that had pancreatic cancer three times, mm. and I said to her, "When do you want to find out?" why it keeps coming back, because she goes through all those treats. That's sure. a brutal disease. Of course. And um, and we and I said, this is where we store anger, and a lot of women store anger, or they have low self-esteem, right? Right. And she actually remembered, well, I took her into a meditation, and she actually remembered hmm. exactly the moment that that anger was stored. She was an allopathic med medical doctor. Hmm. She had a little struggle believing all of that. Sure. And uh, she didn't come back. We stayed friendly while she was still here. Sure. But um, it's just sometimes so obvious to me. Yeah. Like it's not obvious to people, but when they come in and they say this is going on, sometimes sure. it's so obvious to me. Right. Yeah, and I learned a powerful message from you from that session. You said to me, what is it creatively that you are stagnating? This is stagnation. What are you creatively not sharing with the world? And I just sat there like, oh crap. <laughs> I write books every summer and I throw them in the trash. How horrible is that? Yeah. So I've only written one book published, but I've actually written like four. 
Right. But I think they're garbage, so I throw them away. Right. And so each summer you do the same thing. Of course, there's this accumulation of like art sitting on a hard drive, <laughs> never getting shared with the world, never resonating with who it's meant to. So this year I've committed, you're going to write it, but you're going to hit publish no matter what. And you're going to stop doing that act because it's not healthy. Yeah. It's, yeah, we're all divine beings in the world. We're all totally unique and we all have a message and something to bring to the planet. It's our obligation. It's our it's our journey to be here, right? To share whatever it is. We are totally unique. There isn't another one of you anywhere. Sure. Sure. Yeah, and I, I just love that you have created a healthy, safe space to come and unfold with all of that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's it's an it's been an honor, to be honest. It's been an honor to know you, to learn from you to have you as a space and a person who I can come to when I have these moments. And you've known me for years now, cause I've had Fusionary for what, eight years almost. So we've known each other six, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And as I go through those journeys, anytime I needed a surgery or chose to do a surgery on my body, it was really um, an opportunity to talk to a colleague and say, hey, okay, I'm gonna do this, but I wanna walk in marathon ready and strong and healthy. And when I come out, you are part of my plan to detox and heal. And we've used red light therapy and a lot of your tools so that when I come out, my skin heals well and everything comes out, you know, lymphatically clean, less accumulation of scar tissue. It's like a, a beautiful thing to have you as this powerful resource so that on the health journey, not only are you there for my de-stress package, which I badly need all the time, but also th those kind of highlight peak moments of health, when it's a big deal, I have a space to come to and say, hey, I, I need help. Yeah, You know, I wanna heal well. I wanna come out of this equally strong as the moment before so I can keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We also wanna bless those hands that are working on you before you go into surgery. True, absolutely. <laughs> Create a good energy around all of that because it's yeah. important. Yeah. We're, we don't understand, we're not taught this, so most people don't understand this. Um, more people are learning. I'm going back to school for a doctorate and PhD awesome. in integrative and holistic medicine I'm to so help excited share this message more. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. But um, we don't learn this, so it's really it's it's really hard for a lot of people to accept. But yeah. I've seen it in action a million times. I've had six thousand clients. I've seen it over and over and over. Wow. And it's all powerful. And it's just. One little thing at a time. You don't have to make giant changes. You don't have to do crazy things. Sure. Just one little thing at a time that that fits you. Like Absolutely. you know that when you come out of surgery or any kind of stressful situation, yeah. you know where I am. Sure. You've experienced it. But when we first met, yeah. it was a learning process, right? Sure. What is it that's going to work for you? What is it that you're going to enjoy? What is it that's going to calm your nervous system? What is it that's going to make you feel good? Right. How do we change the self-talk? Totally. Exactly. And before we wrap up, let me ask you one more question today, because I always forget this one, but what is your experience with Fusionary? Because you are a Fusionary oh, practitioner. I love Fusionary. So yeah. I, I take turmeric every day, and I said I've had a lot of injury in my body, so the inflammation relief with the turmeric together is powerful. I stand all day long, so on a foot that had a lot of injury and a knee that has a lot of injury. And my clients love it. Awesome. Love it. Awesome. Everybody says, you know, as a matter of fact, I had a client that ran in the other day. I didn't even know her. It was a mother of one of my clients and the client's away for the summer and her mother takes the turmeric and That's she came running and said, I can't run out and she's away. And I was like, okay. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> it's always fun to hear. Yeah. Well, as the person who has this incredible healing center with all the tools and the cool things, thank you, Tracy, for joining me today on the podcast. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate that everyone got to learn about you and, and how incredible you are as a healer. So anyone who wants to find you, they can go to healingmoments.com. Healing Moments Boca. Healing Moments Boca.com. Perfect. And we're right on Federal Highway, south of Spanish River. It's not a walk-in place. It's really by appointment. Sometimes the door is locked if sure. it has to be. Um, so I, I would hate for someone to be stuck outside. Yeah. Yeah. So call her, reach out to her. Yeah. You'll love everything you try there. I promise I can vouch for all of it. So thank you again for joining me for the podcast today. Thanks for joining me for this episode. Check out our sponsor, Fusionary Formulas, the potent turmeric supplement used by doctors around the U.S. for patients with pain and inflammation. www.fusionaryformulas.com 
I'm your host, Dr. Shivani Gupta. For more, visit ShivaniGupta.com. Subscribe to this podcast in Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Click the follow button or subscribe in any of the apps that you use. That's all I've got for you on the Fusionary Health Podcast this week. You have the power to transform your health and achieve vibrant health starting today.